Hey everybody, Pastor Stephen Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the word sodomite in the King James Bible. Now, let me just start out by saying this. I believe that the King James Bible is the Word of God without error. I believe that it is a perfect translation from the original Hebrew and Greek scriptures. And it's been around for over 400 years. It's been proven over and over again to be reliable, trustworthy, accurate. And this should really come as no surprise since it was translated by 54 top scholars over the course of seven years. And these men were fluent in many languages. They were far higher in their learning than a lot of the so-called scholars of today. They didn't just know Hebrew. They knew Arabic. They knew Aramaic. I mean, they were expert in all of those Semitic languages. They were expert in many modern and ancient languages. And so the King James Bible is God's gift to us as English-speaking people. God has preserved his word for us today in the English-speaking world through the King James Bible. So I just want to make it clear where I stand on that. Now, when we think about the word sodomite, it obviously is derived from the name of the city of Sodom. And Sodom was a place that was destroyed by God for their abominations and wickedness. And we know, of course, that the major sin that characterized that story was that they were men who lusted after other men. They were men who desired to lay with other men. And so they were wiped out. And from then on, this word sodomite came to be used about homosexuals because it was a reference to that city. That was the example of what God did to punish that sin. So homosexuals are known as sodomites. So obviously when we look at the word sodomite, we know it's derived from that city and that Bible story. So there are a lot of people who believe that this is a mistake in the King James Bible and that it shouldn't really be a sodomite there, but that it should be a male prostitute. Okay, and I'm gonna prove why they're wrong about that in this video. Now, let me start out by going to the scripture in Deuteronomy 23, where this misunderstanding is coming from. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17 says this, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So in this verse, we have the whore and the sodomite. And then the next verse, we have the whore and the dog. So dog and sodomite are being used interchangeably. The sodomite and the dog are obviously the same person. I'm going to explain a little bit later why dogs are referring to sodomites and why that's so important. But because the whore and the sodomite are put side by side here, this has mistakenly led people to believe that the sodomite is just the male version of a whore. It's just a male prostitute. And so a lot of the modern Bible versions, instead of saying sodomite here, they'll say male prostitute. And everywhere that the King James says sodomite, they'll put a male prostitute. Now, back in the Hebrew, the words look very similar, okay? And this is where the mistake comes from, okay? So the sodomite is this Hebrew word kadesh, and this is kadesha for the whore, okay? So basically, one appears to be the female version of the other. So here's the mistake. People who don't know Hebrew, they don't speak Hebrew, let alone being an expert in Hebrew, like the men who translate the King James Bible, they just look at this and just jump to a conclusion that says, oh, it's the same thing. You know, one's male, one's female, but it's the same thing. And then they go off and think that it's male prostitute instead of sodomite. Okay, and I'm going to prove that wrong. But let me just show you an illustration from Spanish, okay? to show that their logic is flawed. Now, the words that I'm gonna show you in Spanish, I'm not gonna say them out loud because I, most people probably would consider these cuss words in Spanish. You know, you go to different parts of the world and different things are cuss words in different parts of the world or not. And also in the Spanish world, different things mean different things in, in different parts of the world. But I'm gonna go by the understanding that I have of these two words in Spanish based on their usage in many countries in South America and also many people that I've spoken to from Mexico and South America 
who confirmed what these words mean for me. And I'm not going to say them out loud uh, because I don't want to offend anyone. But I, I wrote them down here on this paper and I put a little star to censor it here. But these two words in Spanish, again, one is the same as the other except just the O and the A. So one's masculine, one's feminine. So again, people would look at this and say, oh, you know, it's the same word. One's masculine, one's feminine. But when we look at this example in Spanish, we find that actually this word right here is referring to a prostitute. Okay, the feminine version. This is a whore. But this word right here is referring to a homo. It's referring to a sodomite. Okay. So what we have here is actually the exact equivalent with what we have in Hebrew. Okay. Two words that are the same other than being a masculine and a feminine version, but they don't mean the same thing. Okay. Now, if you were growing up in the Spanish-speaking world where these words are used in this way, then basically you would know that this is a prostitute. Now, this is not a sodomite. This is not a female sodomite or lesbian or anything like that. No, this is just a prostitute. Okay. And then this up here is a homo. Now, this guy's not necessarily selling anything. Now, of course, many sodomites, many homos do sell their bodies. There's no question about that. Okay. But this right here is just a homo. It's not necessarily one who's selling anything. And this right here is a whore. And that doesn't make her a lesbian or a reprobate or a sodomite. Okay. So, Again, somebody who didn't know Spanish could just jump to conclusions about what these words mean. Just like somebody who doesn't know Hebrew is going to jump to conclusions by seeing the similarity of these words, but that doesn't make it so. So the Kadesh is a sodomite and Kadesha is a whore. Okay, let me prove this to you further from the Bible. Okay, um, in the verse itself, sodomite is interchanged with dog. Well, think about what a dog is, okay? A dog is a dirty animal. The Bible talks about dogs will eat their own vomit. We know that dogs will eat excrement and do other disgusting things, okay? Well, think about this. Does a dog sell anything? No, but a dog will pretty much hump anything. And we've all seen dogs that are in heat or dogs that get around other dogs that are in heat where they'll hump somebody's leg, they'll, they'll hump anything. They'll hump a tree, they'll hump, you know, uh, a male, a female dog, whatever, okay? So this is why God is using dog to describe a sodomite. Now, if a sodomite were just only one who sells his body, then it wouldn't make any sense to compare him to a dog because there's no comparison. Whereas if a sodomite is referring to a homo, well, then comparisons abound, okay? But not only that, if we go to the next time the word sodomite is used, 1 Kings 14, 24, the Bible says there were also sodomites in the land and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Now think about this. What were the abominations that caused the Lord to cast out the Canaanites out of the land? Well, the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 18, in Leviticus 20, God goes through those sins. And he explains that it was men lying with mankind. It was men lying with a beast. And he lists all these perversions, but he doesn't mention anything about them selling their bodies or, you know, because of prostitution, the land is spewing them out or they're being kicked out of the land. No, God cast them out of the land because of the abomination of the perversions that they committed. So according to 1 Kings 14.24, the Sodomites are those who do according to the abominations of the Canaanites, those who did according to the abominations of Sodom, okay? So the Bible is quite correct here. The King James Version is quite correct to put Sodomite here because that's what these perverts are called, okay? It's not a prostitute. It's a pervert, okay? Let me read the next scripture here, 1 Kings 15, 12. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. 1 Kings 22, 46. And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. 2 Kings 23, 7. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove. So when we see the new modern Bible versions taking out the word sodomite and instead going with the word 
male prostitute or cult prostitute or shrine prostitute. What that's telling us is that basically they don't really know the Hebrew language correctly. They don't really know the Bible well enough to realize that it's not a prostitute it's a sodomite, it's a homo, okay? And what they're doing is basically just looking at this with their rudimentary Hebrew knowledge and just saying, oh, those really look similar and just going with that and just running with that. Like if a Spanish speaker just automatically assume when he's in Argentina or whatever that, well, this must be a male prostitute or, or this must be a lesbian or what, you know, and, and, and mixing up these two words or mixing up these two words. Look, I'm gonna go with what the King James translators have translated as sodomite it makes more sense. It fits the context of committing the abominations that caused them to be cast out of the land in Canaan, that caused Sodom to be destroyed, and also being like unto a dog. That fits. So we don't want to go with this false teaching that says, hey, actually, it's just a prostitute. And look, why are these modern scholars teaching this? Because they want to defend homos and try to make it out that, well, it's not the fact that it's a man with a man. It's the fact that they're selling it. That's the problem. Okay. That's what's behind this new so-called scholarship to try to get the word sodomite out of the Bible. And then also we don't want to make the opposite mistake and think that a whore is somehow referring to a reprobate or a lesbian or something like that uh, as the female version of the sodomite. That's ridiculous because we know that Jesus Christ, of course, reached many whores with the gospel in his day, so they clearly weren't reprobates. The publicans and the harlots believed in Christ in many cases, and many prostitutes got saved. And, and of course, there are prostitutes who are lesbians that are reprobates, but not all of them are. And the Bible clearly shows us examples where they're not. And in fact, you know, Tamar, who uh, was the one who lay with her father-in-law, okay, um, in that story in Genesis chapter number uh, 38, I believe it is, you know, this word is used to describe when Tamar's by the side of the road pretending to be a prostitute, pretending to be a whore, okay? But it has nothing to do with her being reprobate or lesbian. You know, that's a false teaching. And so anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that the King James Bible is correct when it uses the word sodomite, what the word sodomite means, why it's there, and don't let these kind of arguments try to spin your mind. And look, this is just a, a cautionary tale for people going back to Greek and Hebrew in general when they don't know the language, okay? Because you can come up with wrong conclusions. You know, uh, you, you look at words, and sometimes they, they look like a word you know, and you can think, oh, I know what this means. It's called a false friend. For example, in German, the word gift you know, oh, I know what that means. No, 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 the word gift in German actually means poison. It, it's not a present that you get, okay? Or for example, there's the German word aktuell. And, and when you hear the word aktuell in German, if you don't know German that well, you might think it means actual. But actually aktuell means current. So if I said, meine aktuelle Frau, I'd be saying my current wife. That, that would make it sound like I had other wives, you know, before or after, okay? Uh, whereas, you know, it doesn't mean, yeah, this is actually my wife, you know, so you could, you could say the wrong thing there if you didn't know what that word meant. Or how about the Spanish word efectivo? You might see the word efectivo and just think, oh, that means effective. No, if efectivo means cash, okay? How about the Spanish word embarazada, which means pregnant? You might look at that and think, oh, it just means embarrassed, but actually embarazada means pregnant, Okay, and we could go on and on all the different examples and, and, you know, Bible examples. Like, for example, when the Bible says that they go after strange flesh, you know, in Greek, the, the word strange there is the word hetero. So, so you could say, oh, they went after hetero flesh. So the men in Sodom were actually straight. So you could get all kinds of stupid doctrines by going back to the Greek and Hebrew when you don't know the language. Or how about when the Bible says that God's going to make of Abraham a great nation? You know what the word for nation is in Hebrew? Goy. So he's going to make Abraham into a great goy. Define irony. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that if you don't know Greek and if you don't know Hebrew, then don't try to form conclusions based on what you see in these languages because you don't know the language. 
And don't listen to these so-called scholars who barely know the language or took a few semesters of the language and are, are trying to pull the wool over your eyes and trick you into rejecting the King James Version. Look, go with what the King James Bible says. You speak English. You're fluent in English. I'm fluent in English. Let's talk about what the King James Bible says. And don't let people use a foreign language to try to contradict what the King James is saying. Okay, because the King James Bible was translated by 54 scholars that are way smarter than these bozos who try to go back to the Greek and Hebrew to change what the Bible is saying. Okay, and the King James Bible has been around for over 400 years. It's been tested, tried. We've seen the fruit of it. Okay, these bozo Johnny come lately scholars who want to change what the Bible means all the time and take out hell and take out sodomite and take out damnation and take out all these different things. You know, I wouldn't trust them at all. Okay, because their scholarship leaves something to be desired. And many times they have a wicked agenda even to defend homos or whoever else. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. God bless you. Have a great day.